Should you store dates and times in your database as UTC? This is pretty standard advice if you're working in a system that has dates and times from different time zones. But this common advice doesn't really hold up all the time, especially for dates and times in the future. Here are things you need to consider. Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. I post videos on software architecture and design, so if you're into those topics, make sure to subscribe. This video is brought to you by EventStoreDB, the stream database built from the ground up for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, check out the link in the description. So the standard advice is to record and store all your date times in UTC. So as users are entering their date times in their local time zone, you then convert that to UTC. So as an example, we have my date time here. Let's say it's August 2nd, 2022 at 1800, which is six o'clock at night. And I'm in Eastern daylight time. So I'm in a daylight saving time right now. And I'm at minus four. So if we were to take that date that I've entered, say in some type of UI, some type of client, and then I send that to the server, the server then will uh, convert that and store it in UTC, which would be still the same date, um, August 2nd, 2022 at 2200. And then the Z represents that I'm at UTC zero. So what that looks like is we have a client or some front end UI that makes a request and it's sending us that literal local date time containing the time zone offset to our app or to our service. We're doing the conversion to UTC and then that's what we're persisting to the database. Now on the flip side, if the client makes a request to our app or service and we get out that date time in UTC, we can send that back along to them and then it, the client or the UI can make that conversion to its local date time. So there's two reasons why I think this standard device exists. So the first is because you're standardizing and doing everything in UTC and that's how you're storing it, this allows you to query your database and everything's the same way. So if you're filtering or sorting, it's all that way already. You wouldn't have to do some uh, conversion at runtime. The second reason is I think is that people are only accounting for dates and times in the past, but that's where the problem lies. And that's because if you're thinking about dates and times in the future, there's reasons why that date and time that if you do that conversion right now for a date in the future, it can change. And that's because time zones can change. When you do that conversion right now, you're accounting for how time zones are at this very moment. But that's not to say that they won't change in the future. And then another example of this as well, which is a little bit more likely to happen, is daylight saving time. Those rules changing. So again, if I'm observing daylight saving time in 2022 a particular way, and I have a date time that I'm persisting in UTC that I record right now, and say for 2025, that's not to say daylight saving time might change and what the rules are and when you observe it, if you observe it. So doing that conversion at the moment of persisting is basing on the rules when you're persisting it, not necessarily what it will be in the future when that date and time is actually need to be realized. So let's use this as an example, to just kind of go through the steps and what we really should be recording. So let's say we have some type of location that we're basing this date time on. So we have a date time that I'm recording as an example right now as the local date time. So in 2025, August 2nd at 1800, and I'm in my offset right now is minus 400. So that is what maybe I persist right now. But like we said, the problem with that is that may not be what daylight saving time or the time zone is. Now, the thing is, how do you derive if the time zone does change or daylight saving time changes, how do you then convert that to what the, based on the new rules? You don't really have any information here about what the actual time zone rules are for this particular location. And if we were doing the best practice of just converting it to UTC, again, we still have the same problems that if it changes, how do we then update these date times? So one solution to this is to use a library, for example, Nota Time or Jota Time, depending on what your platform, they're probably underneath the hood using the time zone database. And this, it will contains rules for daylight savings time, time zone boundaries, UTC offsets, etc. But they, they contain a name that you can be using as an identifier, it's a time zone ID that you can then persist alongside that date time, that literal date time for a location that you're persisting. So what that looks like is I'm recording the IANA, that time zone identifier of America Toronto, that directly relates to the location that I'm specifying for that literal date time. 
So my daytime uh, doesn't even actually have the offset anymore. It's just a literal time that the user may have specified based on that location. Now the problem is how do we even query this? Because we have the date times as literals, how do we do sorting? Because everything is really in a different time zone. Well, keep going further with this. Now record that local date time that we specified along with the IANA name and as well as do the conversion to UTC. And that's what you can potentially query on. So now we have our identifier of IANA, which we know what the actual time zone that we're using for that physical location. We're recording the literal date time that the user specified based on that location. And then we did our conversion to UTC so that we could do things like query, filter, sorting, et cetera. But as I mentioned at the very beginning, time zones can change, daylight saving time can change, these rules can change. So how do we update these dates in the future? Well, what we also want to record is the version of the time zone database that we use. And right now it's 2022A. And I record that because when I'm using Nota time, I can get that version out of what we're using from TZDB and I can persist that along. When we have some new version that comes out that affects the time zone database, we could then pull out these local date times and update our and do our conversion and update our date time UTC. So we don't have to worry about if dates times, for example, daylight saving time change, time zone change, whatever the case may be, we can then go update our existing data. So is the standard device of just recording and persisting UTC in your database the way to go? Well, it is if you're only recording dates in the past. However, if you're recording dates in the future, you wanna look at recording what the actual time zone information is related to the location of that literal date time. And then go as far as recording what the database version of the time zone database was, as well as doing that pre-computation of two UTC so you can still do querying for filtering, sorting, etc. Thanks to all the developer level members on YouTube and Patreon. They get access to a private Discord server where you can communicate with other like-minded developers about software architecture design. Check out the links in the description for more information. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment. And please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.